All right, guess what day it is? Okay, the title says it all. It's my pantry day. So I have a pantry day every little bit. Whenever I feel like I need to set some time aside to restock some items in my pantry, I call that a pantry day. I have certain items in my pantry that are highly used and heavily benefit my cooking. Uh, mostly in the way of adding flavor or texture. So I'm gonna show you guys a handful of things that I do as well as maybe a little bit of a fail of something I tr I'm trying out that someone recommended to me. That person shall be nameless, but um, they kind of put me on a cool path of some simple ways of making my own crackers, which I really wanna get into because I have so much sourdough and if I can make it myself, why wouldn't I? Um, but I'm not doing any pantry restock here. What I'm actually doing the past little bit, what you've been seeing is I'm putting together Edmund's baby food. I peeled some local apples, put some frozen vegetables, and I also have some frozen blueberries that I got from Costco into this pot. I'm going to steam them with some water. And while that is cooking in the background, we're going to tackle some of these pantry essentials for me. So first off, I realized the ginger that I had been buying from the store had aspartame in it, which is why it tastes weird, and I'm pretty sure I have a kid that is sensitive to it. And I used to make ginger, pickled ginger, all the time. And I don't remember why I stopped, but I was like, you gotta get back into it. I do my own pickles. Might as well do my own pickled ginger again. I only have a little bit of ginger here. The next time I go to the store, I'm gonna get a bunch more ginger and make a large batch, but I'm just taking a spoon to peel off this peel, a knife to take out some of the um, heavier brown uh, sections, and we're gonna start using my mandolin to create some nice thin slices. <laughs> mandolin is linked down below in my shop my kitchen link I really enjoy this mandolin because I'm able to thinly slice items there's actually a knob on the side that allows you to do thick or thin slices there's even I believe some shredding options which is beautiful I enjoy this oh so much and it's very affordable as well I use it for pickled ginger cucumbers for pickles you can do it for potatoes to make potato chips or apples for apple chips. I'm going to salt my ginger dry, kind of mix it and massage it into my ginger and let it sit. If you want a more strong ginger taste, this is the way to do it. If you want a ginger taste that's a little bit more mild, soaking it in a warm salt water for an hour is going to do that. I was going to do this video recipe by recipe, but I realized that, you know what, I wanna show you how my few hours here actually looks. So while I am letting my ginger sit for an hour, I'm gonna get started on some breadcrumbs here. This is a sourdough loaf from the day before. The bread got overproofed because, haha, I forgot to put my bread into the fridge, like my dough into the fridge. It got overproofed quite quickly, but I still baked it and I was like, these are gonna be beautiful sourdough breadcrumbs. The tang and the flavor you get from a sourdough breadcrumb is unlike any other breadcrumb, I would say. Maybe except for, I don't know if you've ever done this, but when I was very gluten-free, I used to make potato crumbs and crusted my fish, my chicken, and so many more other things in. And that's a great option if you're gluten-free. I love these sourdough breadcrumbs though. So I'm going to bake those at about 350 until they are brown and toasty. Next, I'm gonna go in with some cucumbers. So I always have the idea if I'm pickling one thing, I might as well pickle a second thing. So I thought that would be cucumbers. You can always do things like banana peppers as well, or garlic or onions, but I thought some pickles would be perfect. I'm going to heavily salt them and mix them around a little bit so the salt is well distributed. It's gonna pull out some of that uh, liquid and help the brine pierce into the vegetable a little bit better. I'm gonna let these sit for a little bit alongside my ginger and just take a second. If you're like me, 
you find it so easy to go, 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 and then you get overwhelmed and then you go, okay, I need to stop for a second. And sometimes stopping can actually be really hard, but do it, say a prayer, Lord, give me strength and just keep going. Um, but take breaks when you need to, because we need to even show our kids that taking breaks is for everybody. So now I'm going to make my brine. It's one and a half cups of organic cane sugar. I use two and two third cups of rice vinegar and then two cups of water. I'm gonna put it into a small saucepan and bring it to a boil. I like to firstly make sure that my sugar is dissolving and not burning, so I whisk this quite frequently. Once it's really boiling and the sugar is dissolved, I'm going to um, give it about 10 or 15 minutes of a good boil before I turn it off. I actually go by smell over look. If it smells less vinegary than when I first put it on, we're probably getting close to being able to use it. I'm going to rinse my ginger and also put it into a towel and really squeeze all that moisture out. And then I'm also going to rinse my cucumber, dry it, and we'll be ready to put these into jars. I was very close to juicing this ginger, but when I realized how little I had, it would go further if I were to pickle it. Also, these cucumbers that are gonna be pickles, they will be a sweet pickle because the brine itself is sweet. So I am adding some garlic and pepper on the bottom of the jar to add a bit of that extra tang flavor. And then I'm basically gonna pour my brine over top. So my brine is definitely my recipe, but I don't have an exact measurement for how many jars it'll do, how many pickles or ginger it'll do, but I make brine and see how far it'll go, and I roll like that. I love canning. I'll do it short term, I will do it long term, but that short term of just putting it into the jar, the brine to the veggies, letting it cool and then putting it into the fridge is so simple and something I really enjoy doing. It'll keep for about six weeks and I really enjoy both long and short term canning. Now, my friend told me that I was able to make sourdough crackers easily at home with a few ingredients. So she said use about a cup of sourdough, a few tablespoons of melted butter, preferably salted, add in whatever herbs you like. I did a bunch of lemon pepper as well as some thyme. She said mix it together and you're just half an hour away from crackers. I've never made my own crackers, but I want to. The reason why is just, I look at crackers at the store and I'm like, why are you putting corn syrup and dimethicone into my crackers. So I've been enjoying trying to make more things at home and crackers is one of them. I will show you how this recipe turns out. There's definitely things I will do differently, but I'm going to put it onto parchment paper, sprinkle it with some sea salt and bake it at 325 for about 30 to 35 minutes. I'm gonna show you guys what they look like in a little bit, but while those are baking, we're gonna move on to our breadcrumbs. So a couple things. The first thing is that you want your bread to be totally cool before you start blending it so you get breadcrumbs and not like bread mush because if it's still warm, it's gonna be steamy and letting off moisture and it won't be as crummy. Also, you don't have to use a sourdough that just didn't turn out. You can use any type of bread as long as you well toast it in the oven. So I put it through my Vitamix on a pulsing speed. I pour it out and then I take kind of the bigger chunks that are hanging out on top put it back in the Vitamix with some more pieces and then do that all over again. And I pretty much just keep doing that until I have full on breadcrumbs. This takes a little bit, especially because this batch of sourdough was quite crispy. And if you're curious what I use my breadcrumbs for, it is a 
variety of things. I'm able to create crispy chicken, crispy fish, like crusted, you know what I mean? And I'm also able to put this into some meat dishes, sometimes hamburgers, sometimes meatballs. They are just very, very handy to have around. I do put them into a container without any salt or flavorings. I'm able to add those things the day that I'm actually making the food that needs these breadcrumbs. Okay, so I talked to my friend and I said, did you lie to me because you loved these crackers that apparently you made? And she was like, Sarah, just try them. So I did. And they taste awesome. I think I ate almost all of them in this one stand here. They're kind of like a pita chip, but they are ugly as heck and I know that I can do better. So I'm going to test some other techniques and I'll let you know what I come up with. But now I want to do some candied nuts with you guys. I have my cast iron heated to a medium heat. I'm gonna add in a couple tablespoons, not even of coconut oil, and then add in my nuts. I have pine nuts, pumpkin seeds, pistachios, and slivered almonds here. So I realize candied nuts sound kind of random, but I love these on a salad. So you're gonna add in your coconut oil, your nuts, you're gonna toast them for a few minutes. You'll be able to really smell that toastiness. Add in about a quarter cup of any sweetness you like. I'm using organic brown sugar. You can use raw coconut sugar. You can use honey or maple syrup. You're gonna stir it for a couple more minutes, turn off that heat and keep on stirring. It's gonna create kind of a crumbly glaze. If you are using brown sugar, it's gonna create more of a syrup. If you're using honey or maple syrup, you're gonna put it on parchment paper, let them really cool. And these are delicious on salads, okay? Once my pickles and ginger are fully cooled, I'm going to put a lid on top. These are the cutest and the best lids for your mason jars. They come in different colors, different sizes, and again, that's linked in my shop kitchen link below. And they're ready to go hang out in the fridge. They will last up to a month. I have had them last longer, but I would give them about a month, not like it lasts that long <laughs> in my kitchen. And then when the nuts are fully cooled, I'm also going to put them into a container and just store them in my pantry at room temperature. And now I get to tidy up my kitchen. Thank you for being here. Thanks for all the support as well, you guys. Having you back and interested in what I have to share and do is extremely humbling and my heart is just bursting at your guys' comments and thoughts and reactions. So I'm very thankful for you. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in my next video. Bye.